Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting together a NAS server for our home theater. This is a little different from the normal content that we usually do, but we thought it'd be interesting and fun to show you how we put it together. And we'll get to that right after the intro. All right, so this is everything we're going to be using for the build. I think the first thing we're going to show is what we actually bought. So to start off with, we have these Kingwin hot swappable bays. They have four bays in them. Actually pretty nice. They're aluminum and steel and the front's plastic, but they're built really well. We know that because uh, one of us actually dropped it on the floor and it dented the floor, but not the drive. Uh, on the back, they have built-in fans and then all the connections. And the really nice thing about this is to get four hard drive bays it only takes up three five and a quarter inch bays. So for six bays, we're getting eight slots for hard drives. And we bought these from eBay for $32 a piece, which is actually a really good deal. Uh, we also bought a four port SATA controller. These all came with the drive bays. Uh, and then we bought this HGST eight terabyte hard drive. Yeah, this is the helium drive. Um, that's some really cool marketing that, you know, they put helium in it and it runs longer and better. So yeah, I had to buy it just for the helium. Anyway, this uh, 8 terabytes was $180. So not bad. And uh, the HGST, basically it's Western Digital. So they sell this exact same drive branded as Western Digital. So there's really no difference between them. Western Digital actually owns HGST. The rest of the drives we took out of our home theater PC, I believe we're about, what is there, about 21 terabytes? Yeah. Yeah, 21 terabytes, something like that. And eventually, we want to end up with all of the 8 terabyte or maybe 10 terabytes. So that's the nice thing about the hot swap bay, is when we want to switch one out, we can just pull it out, throw it in. So one thing I forgot to mention is we're not going to use these as hot swappable bays. We just want an easy access to the drives in case we want to change them out. And we're just using, uh, what is this, a 32 gig? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thir oh, it says right there, 32 gig. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna use this as our boot drive. And the rest of the stuff we're gonna be using in this build is just a bunch of components that we had from previous projects. So like the motherboard here, this is a gigabyte motherboard with an AMD A10 and eight gigabytes of RAM that we actually used in our previous video where we built our own home theater PC. It was lying around, so we decided we'd go ahead and use it. Uh, we also had the 750 Ti. You definitely don't need a graphics card, especially not like a 750 Ti for a NAS, but we're going to be transcoding in Plex, so we decided it'd be a pretty good idea to have the GPU rather than try to do software transcoding on the CPU. We're also going to be using this Blu-ray burner that we have to rip movies, and we just have a Corsair CX430 power supply, nothing special. And finally, we just have the case. This is an Antec 900. We had it in our garage and we chose it because it has all this five and a quarter inch base that we should be able to fit all of our drives in. So the main reason we decided to go this route instead of just buying a NAS is because we actually have a ton of old computers lying around. So it really made a lot of sense to us to use the parts we already had, which ended up saving us a lot of money. In fact, the only thing we really had to purchase for this build was the SATA controller because our motherboard only has eight SATA ports, which wouldn't be enough for all of our hot swappable bays, Blu-ray drive, and SSD. We decided to add hot swappable drive bays for convenience, but this project still works completely fine with any normal case that has enough drive bays for your drives. And as far as the hard drive goes, that's something you'd need whether you were to build or to buy a NAS. Now you have a few options as far as software goes. You could do something like free NAS, Unraid, Ubuntu Server, and I'm sure there's plenty more that we're not able to list here. But we decided to go with a plain old Windows 10 because it's easy to set up. We're gonna be using this NAS as a general Plex media server and file server. My son also wants to run game servers on it, some of which are Windows only. And we can also use it for storing raw video footage for our YouTube channel. Now one last point I want to make here before we end the video is that I'm in no way trying to compare this with a NAS or something you could go out and buy like a Synology or a QNAP. 
This is the best way for us to go, so that's why we did it. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, have an awesome day.